Hey everyone, so today I put out my shop tour video up on YouTube and I've had great reactions from it so far, thanks very much. I did get a comment from someone named Art and he had nice things to say about the shop but he asked me about how I was able to get so much in this space organizational wise and still have a lot of room to move and he's like, I'd, I'd welcome some details. So here's your details, Art. Let's go ahead and kind of evaluate some areas that I did in this small two car garage shop to be able to fit as much as I do and still have a lot of space. So probably the big number one thing that I was able to do was take all of my outdoor lawn care equipment and put it out in a shed that I have. So I have a 10 by 10 shed next to the house. All that stuff lives out there weed eater, chainsaws, lawnmower, everything. Some people are not going to have that luxury and that's gonna be a problem for you. So one option that you could use as a solution is something that I've used for this solution up here. I have all my kids' bikes, my wife's bike, my bike up here. Um, luckily it's just above my height clearance, uh, the way I have them up on this system. So it works. It's not conducive for me filming in here for YouTube, so um, every once in a while you might see a tire right above my head. But they do make a model of this that is more of a platform that comes down. So that is an option for somebody who maybe has a push mower. I don't know if it'll work for a riding lawn mower. But if you have a push mower and some other lawn tools, you could get one of these systems that lowers down. And what it does is it's on a winch system. I love this thing and I love this for my family's safety would be the way I would put it. When we first moved in here, I went to Harbor Freight and bought the little rope pulley guys for the bikes to put them up on the ceiling until one of them fell down and almost hit my wife when she was getting it down. So that was a big no-no. Um, and then I decided, well, I'm gonna go to Harbor Freight and buy one of those uh, just winch kits and I'm gonna attach the winch up onto the ceiling, run it down to some pulleys on a bar back up to the top and the bar will raise and lower. Uh, big mistake on that one, crash, things falling, things snapping, not good. Um, so I really do like this system. This one is the Garage Gator. Um, it's a two strap web system. So it's two individual reels that bring it up. And that's why this is, even if I put all the weight to one side, it raises and lowers at a level plane. Um, so if you were to need to, you know, really get rid of some of your landscaping tools and you had no other option, if you have a high enough ceiling, maybe something like this will work for you. My next strategy would deal with in layout of your shop. Uh, ultimately, corners are dead zones. You're not going to be able to really get into corners that well. And I'll show you in another corner of my shop in a second. And so that's why I put my dust collection system over in this corner. Uh, if I didn't have this here, yes, I could have extended my miter station all the way to the corner over here. And you know, it would have given me an extra foot and a half of space on here. And it would have given me another foot and a half of shelving right here. But if that happened, it would eliminate the availability to have anything right here because you need to be able to stand in front of whatever you're doing. Corners make that hard. It's an, it's an either this or that. And so if you wanna be able to utilize all the way around, you have to treat the far corner as dead space. So something that you're not gonna use or use very frequently. So very good for a dust collection system over in the corner. Let me show you what I mean in the other side. So over here in the other corner of my garage, I did what I just talked about. I continued this all the way over. And that's how I know it doesn't really work that well. Um, in a perfect world, I actually would have tried to put maybe one of my bigger tools over here um, or rethought this whole area because I find myself never touching anything here, forgetting I have wood over here, throwing lots of stuff just in this corner. This has become my junk corner. Um, of sorts. And when I do try to get over, it's, 
it just feels enclosed and awkward and it's not a workspace. I'm never going to assemble something over here because I can't get my body over here. Um, probably I start at the vise and work my way that way. So, you know, if I was doing this space, maybe this is a place for ladders. Maybe this is a place for um, vertical lumber storage. A corner is a good place for vertical lumber storage if you're looking to do that. Um, that way you can utilize the space and completely pack it full. I mean, you can have wood coming out this far before you start to intersect with other workspaces. But it's something that you're only going to touch every once in a while. And so lumber storage might be a great idea for over in a corner. Next thing would be being able to stack as many clamps as possible in as small of a space as possible. I see guys with big shops that have like clamp carts that they'll roll around and those are really cool, but it would never work in my shop. And so I've taken the position of saying, obviously we're organizing by size, smallest to largest. And that is because of course, this large Bessie clamp, I can reach from my shoulder height, even though it goes all the way up to the ceiling. And I have really tall ceilings here. So, um, putting all your small stuff and stacking it out as far as possible. These clamps I have two, four, six, seven deep for my little uh, $5 guys, which just a little short tip. I love these things. They're five bucks at Lowe's. I love them over the Bessie ones because the cheap Bessie clamps have wooden slippery handles and the ponies have nice rubberized handles right here and they're five bucks. So I'm addicted to these guys. Sorry, clamp tangent. Next big one is learning to double stack your clamps. I don't even do this as effectively as I could do this. Um, just even in trying to think of what to say to you and respond to this right now, I came up with a new way to organize these clamps over here. Um, these guys, I could totally do a two stack system where this one goes in lower right here. And so now they're really close together. I'm double stacking these, uh, these bar clamps. But anyways, the Bessie ones, if you take a look, I have the big boys right here that go all the way up to the top. And the way I had to do this was the, the clamp handle had to go against the wall so that the bar would rest on the wooden cleat that the next one is sitting on. If I were to spin it around, then it's sticking too far out and I risk the clamp falling off of the wall. The smaller clamps right here, I do the opposite. So they are bar against the wall handle out. And typically I try to actually have them not touch like these two are. I try to put the higher, them a little bit higher when they go in so they don't push off of each other. This is a great way to smush your clamp storage in and then that frees up more space on your wall for other stuff. I'm able to get two, four, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 Bessie clamps in 20 inches up on the wall. So uh, double stacking your, your clamps is the way to go. The next big thing is if you have any sort of workbench table, you need to get the most out of the space and utilize every single inch of the underneath of the surface as you possibly can. Since this is a torsion box, it's basically like a honeycomb on the inside. So I cut open the sides so I could utilize each of these honeycomb sections. And so it gave me great places for lots of little stuff that I use all the time, like my bench cookies or painters cones or my bench cookie risers. Um, and of course, lots of pens and pencils and all that type of stuff. It's a great way to do drawers in this system. Let's just you move it. Um, this is where I keep all of my sandpaper. And so I did a dado uh, divider in here. That way I can keep everything divided. I can put bigger stuff in the back. All my bigger belts for sanding here. This is basically like my sanding zone. I have all of my orbital sanders here, belt sander. Um, and then we get over to my painting supplies. But the end all answer is the entire volume of this workbench is being utilized for storage, 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 storage. 
finding storage wherever you can get it is the number one priority in all this stuff. Now, storage is good. Very organized storage is best, but there's just a lot of stuff that you're not gonna be able to nicely organize. And so that's where you see this whole line of bins that I have up here. And so all these bins go really deep and it's just chuck in everything you can to fill up this space. And yeah, I could make individual, you know, uh, French cleat holders for each one of these things, but inevitably you just gotta chuck some stuff in a bin sometimes too. And so that's what I have on the upper areas. So it's not in my immediate work zone for the most part. Um, it's up high. It's all the stuff I chuck in there. I make sure to keep it well labeled so that I know what's in there but um, you gotta have that space where you're just chucking stuff to get it out of the way. Next thing would be the small part storage. If you take a look at this, it's really small. I believe it's 11 inches. Yeah, 11 inches wide by a little over two feet, I think. Yeah, 11 by 30. This 11 by 30 section holds so much stuff and it's stuff that I actually use a lot. Um, this one I've made into all of my washers. This one has brackets and a couple miscellaneous items in there. This one has magnets and brackets and uh, small parts to my power tools. So if I have random things that come off of stuff, it goes in this bin and that way I know exactly where to look if I need it. Um, wall anchors, pads, hooks and brackets. This is a whole wire shelving bin and shelf pegs. This is for when I moved into the house and I did wire shelving throughout all the, the closets and stuff. There's so many little pieces that I had going with that. Um, these little small parts guys are awesome. All of these are bolts for me. Um, I try to keep a lot of bolts on hand and actually this one is almost half empty. I have enough storage space in this garage. I do have some drawers that are actually empty and some things that are empty, um, which is a good thing, right? Over on my side desk area on my CNC machine, I did um, kind of an organized board. That way I can have all of my hand screwdrivers color coded in and size layout, um, all my extra little um, slide bits and even each one of the sets, if I ever wanted to use these. Honestly, I don't even know if I've ever pulled those out, to be honest. Um, this guy is a big win. This would be several drawers in your typical like mechanics metal toolbox, but instead it takes up a very small space and you can see where everything is in here. So this is a majority of all of my different wrenches and snips and uh, pliers and even something like this, which has all of my different um, tweezers. And then towards the other side, I even have all of my small details sanding stuff. So individual sanding sticks, the uh, small sanders and small like rasps type of stuff. So this small space holds an incredible amount of tools in a very organized way. And so I highly recommend doing something like this for organizing all of your hand tools. Now, just a, a couple comments on layout right here. Believe it or not, I have been able to get both my car and my wife's car in here at the same time without removing any of these uh, pieces that you see here in the video. Uh, my assembly table, I had to roll it towards me and then turn it to the side, then butt it up against my miter station here. The table saw, the um, standing desk, and the drill press are actually in line with the gap between the garage doors there. Um, that cabinet is the exact width of the gap. That's also why I made it that way, is so that it didn't interfere if we tried to bring a car in. And then I brought the CNC machine, which is on casters too, all the way this way. And so uh, both of our cars are able to, to fit in here. 
uh, which we had to do one time when there was a hurricane coming and we didn't want our cars to be outside and get damaged. So that was a consideration when I made this. And so that's why you can kind of see that the, the floor is completely empty in both of those areas over there. Um, but what that did do as a side effect was now I'm able to get a full eight foot sheet. If I was gonna rip down sheet goods this way, the sheet comes to about right here just before the uh, counter starts. And then when I slide it through, the sheet actually stops about a foot before the other counter on the other side. So I'm able to rip full long sheets here. Um, one of Art's questions was, if I have something like 14 feet long, how am I gonna be able to cut that in a two car garage? And the answer is you can't cut it this way. It's not gonna happen, but you can cut it diagonal. So I normally don't deal with stuff that's that large, but if you were going to do it and it was a rip, not a miter cut, um, I would probably take this equipment, move it over and bring my, um, my saw over to the corner so that I could cut a corner everything and cut it this way. That way I could still keep it in the garage, keep the garage door co closed if it's winter time. Um, that's a big reason too for everything to have wheels on it. I can move and shuffle everything around as I need to and um, it makes things a lot easier when you're assembling stuff if your tools are right next to you or if it's closer to your dust collection system but it needs to live far away from your dust collection system the rest of the time. Another tip would be to make sure you're utilizing all of the depth of something if you have the capability to do it. So when I originally built out this holder in here, I put a piece of plywood on top and just covered this over for some reason that met this, uh, the top of my fence here. Kind of like what I did right here. Um, but then at a certain point I realized I'm just wasting space and even though it's a little tight under here I can get everything I want under there. So I ended up segmenting all of my batteries. My rule of thumb is if a battery needs to be charged it goes on the charger or it goes on the table next to the charger. Once it's fully charged it goes here until I need to grab it. And uh, so I put all of my Milwaukee stuff since my Milwaukee M12s are right here I can just slam it down right on that and take it out. So that's convenient for me. Um, I have Makita Bosch DeWalt batteries right here that I still can grab. It's a little awkward, but I can grab them under here. And then in the back, I put all of my accessories for uh, my grinder and a couple other like dust collection accessories back here. So stuff that I needed, but again, I'm utilizing all of that space, even if it's just kind of throwing stuff back there, I know where it is and, and what it's for. So utilize deep cabinets as much as you can with partitions. So my last suggestion is to utilize every single square foot of wall space you have and go high. Before I built out everything, I did install that wire shelf that went all the way across, all the way around. And then I double decorated it by putting um, a wooden shelf right here on top of all this cabinetry. So this, I apologize for shaky cam, but I'm gonna lift it up just so you guys can see. Um, you know, I got Christmas stuff. All of this is all my spare uh, small tool parts organizers. Got some kayaks up there, inflatable ones. Uh, I keep a big collection of Kaizen foam and stuff just for all sorts of purposes, maybe I don't even need it, who knows. I got aircraft cable from a project, I got plexiglass up from a project, more Christmas stuff and truck straps. And then I have a huge, just extra section of wood because this shelf is three feet deep as opposed to most of my wood storage down here that's two feet deep. So I can get some three foot stuff up here. I even have uh, some stuff that I milled myself that's drying out up there that's a little bit long. And I have a coffee table mold that I was gonna do a, a river pour, a uh, epoxy river pour that's sitting up there because I got bored with it and shelved it to the side for a little while. Whole bunch of coolers and even a, a plug-in refrigerator over there. So lots of our family stuff over here. It's a lot of stuff. 
and even it's a lot more my my tool stuff. I buy my screws by the 3000 box here and I got four of them back there. So, uh, you know, use your height in your garage and utilize all that space that you could be storing stuff up there. Um, I own a Christmas light company. Um, in addition, so even though I have warehouse space, I still can't get enough space to store all my wreaths. So I have four of these uh, ceiling mounted shelving units that I jam pack full of wreaths for my customers um, for the holiday season. Um, I really actually want to get rid of those and put more of my stuff up on top. Same with right above my garage doors. I actually just did this the other day. I put some more sheeting in here and did a little shelf just so rather than putting cans on the first level, now I can put them on two levels. And so now I have a whole extra one over here that I'm not even using. Um, use that vertical space. So Art, my friend, hopefully I was able to answer some questions for you. Everybody else, hopefully you got some small shop organizational ideas. Um, obviously every space is different, so uh, I'm just trying to give some guidance and some ideas to you know, help you on your unique individual journey that you have to go through. If you have any questions or thoughts, throw it down in the comments, just like Art did. I made this whole video just to respond to you know, some questions that he posed. And we're a new channel. Um, we've only been out a day and I've posted, this will be video 23. So I'm doing my best to try and put out good content out there for you. I'd really love it if you could like and subscribe, trying to get to that special YouTube threshold of a thousand subscribers. Um, and otherwise, stay safe in the shop and I'll see you in the next one.